Hi everyone, it's my pleasure to welcome you to Long COVID on the Short, a channel dedicated to all things research in Long COVID. I'm your host, Herberto Danis, and I'm a 29-year-old biomedical engineer finishing a PhD in neuroscience at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. With this intro video, I want to tell you what this channel is going to be all about and one or two things about myself, you know, so you have an idea of who's behind this. So Long COVID on the Short is going to be a YouTube channel dedicated to exploring the most prominent research hypotheses on the causes of Long COVID on the shortest amount of time. So think like five to seven minutes max. You can check this nice article on the most dominant theories uh, about Long COVID uh, even though it's not super up to date because it's like from May, it's still a very nice starting point. So the theories are microclotting, vascular and endothelial dysfunction, autoimmunity, viral persistence, and immune dysfunction. When covering each of these theories, I'll present you with the most important uh, data and papers only, so I'm sure I'm not going to be able to cover everything here, right? After the videos on these theories, I am actually also pretty excited to make some videos where I try to tie these theories all together and some of the new papers are also trying to do that, which is pretty cool. And you know, let's see what comes up new uh, until then. But all in all, I just hope that these videos will manage to carry enough information that they will be good for interested clinicians trying to take care of their patients and also simplified in a way that people that don't have a background in science can also follow along what I'm trying to say. And with that said, I'll also uh, release 30 second shorts on every video really saying very quickly what this theory is about. Okay, so you might also be wondering why on the short, like this is a really complex topic, so why do that? Uh, there's mainly two reasons for that actually. The first one is that I want new patients to have a place where they have a lot of information condensed in a short amount of time so that then if they find something interesting there, they can go and research on their own. Then my second goal, which might be a little bit more naive, is that I want to break out of the patient bubble. I want these videos to be seen by the family and friends of long COVID patients, and most importantly, by the doctors who are taking care of long COVID patients. But that, that's why it needs to be short, right? While we as patients might be motivated to research for hours and hours or uh, watch hour and a half long videos, People that are healthy, you know, friends, family, general practitioners and, and medical, res uh, medical doctors that are not researchers, they don't have the time nor the motivation to do that, right? So I think five minute videos to give a good perspective on one long COVID uh, hypothesis is pretty feasible. Also, this means that, you know, if you're an expert or a patient expert, uh, these videos might be too simple for you and you might think, well, I didn't cover this or that but I hope you understand what I'm trying to do, right? Okay, then another thing that I also thought would be important to talk about is why is a biomedical engineer uh, doing a PhD in neuroscience making videos about long COVID? Uh, I think it's always important that you try to find out a little bit more about the person who's giving you all this information. So to be clear, I'm not what you would classically call an expert in the field, like I'm not. However, what I have is a background in biomedical engineering that really allows me to follow uh, these concepts. I am a patient myself, which gives me the motivation uh, to research and to do these videos. And then I do think that through my PhD, I acquired very good skills in you know, reading papers, identifying their strong and weak points, and also understanding how science works. A lot of times in science, you're not gonna have the study that has all the perfect control groups, but you learn how to understand that this study is still very valuable, and maybe this one is not, based on potentially their hypothesis. Um, then furthermore, like since I'm not from the field, I'm not looking at this with any specific lenses of like endothelial dysfunction or immune dysfunction. I'm trying to look at the data as they come and just explain and simplify it to you. Um, I also know for sure that I'm gonna make some mistakes making these videos, and it will also be a learning journey for me. And now just to finish up, like you probably got that I also have long COVID. Uh, it's true, indeed, in the beginning of this year in February, I got COVID and unfortunately ended up developing uh, long COVID. Uh, even though I, I think I was in a very, very good physical shape, I had no other known conditions and I had mostly an asymptomatic infection. Yeah, it sucks. 
but you know I'm someone who runs towards information in the face of the unknown so as soon as I could I started devouring long COVID research and you know it gave me hope to see that people are looking into this and research is progressing even if it's not progressing at the pace that I would like it to progress as as a patient um, but I hope to pass on some of that hope to you like COVID-19 and long COVID taking into account that they exist for like two and a half years they are the most studied diseases in the world right now. They're not mysterious anymore, like some people like to say, and they are much, much more than just a respiratory disease. So, you know, for whoever needs to hear this, and most of the time that's myself as well, we will get out of this. But until then, I hope you stay safe. And if you're on this boat, I can only hope that your recovery is steady, even if it's not as fast as you would like. So stick around if you think this channel would be interesting for you. Uh, and yeah, see you in the next video.